welcome to the launch of Polly Sampson's new novel, A Theatre for Dreamers, which is out today. The story is set on the idyllic island of Idra in Greece, and to read it is to be transported there. You feel the sun on your skin and taste the retsina on your tongue as you turn the pages. As Leonard Cohen, one of Idra's most famous residents and a character in this book, said, the materials are very beautiful. Nothing hurts the eye. In 1960, the year in which A Theatre for Dreamers is set, an unstable circle of artists, writers and musicians had settled on Idra. It wasn't only Leonard Cohen. There was the mercurial Norwegian writer Axel Jensen and his wife, Marianne Illen, a famous beauty. And there were George Johnston and Charmian Clift, a couple of deeply troubled Australian writers who formed the explosive core at the heart of this fiery artistic community. Tonight, we were supposed to be putting on an immersive event at Central Hall, Westminster, but for obvious reasons, we had to postpone all of the events. Luckily, we have this set built by Gabriel and Yanina. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're coming very handy later. So, now. we can give you a small taste of what those events will be like uh, when they eventually happen. Yep. This is Katsikas, the bar by the sea on Idra where Leonard Cohen, Charmy and Clift, and the other characters in this book drink, smoke, row, and watch the horizon, waiting and hoping for a new lover or perhaps a royalty check. Um, tonight we'd like to try to take you back to Hydra, all the way back to 1960. And to start things off, Polly is going to give us a taste of the first few pages of the novel, where the main character, Erica, looks back on her youth on the island. Thank you. So, um, this, it starts with Erica looking back on her life, looking back on 1960, which was the year that she arrived on Idra. It's a climb from the port, and I take the steps of Don Quixote Lane at a steady pace, a heart-shaped stone in my pocket. I walk alone, and though there's no one to witness, I resist the urge to stop and rest at the standing posts after the steepest part. I watch my step, a stumbles can so easily become full. Oh, oh sorry, never worked with children before. A thought that disgusts the gazelle, still living within my stiffening body. The marble slabs shine from centuries of use. The light is pure. Even on a morning gloomy as this, with the sky low enough to blot out the mainland and clouds crowding in on the harbour, these whitewashed streets dazzle. Two young lads skip arm in arm down the steps towards me. I'm as anonymous as a shepherd or a muleteer in Dinos's ancient tweed jacket, my hands bulging its pockets, my boots comfortably laced. The lines on my face have been deepened by these years in the sun, and my hair hasn't seen dye, or even the hairdresser's scissors, for who knows how long, but so what? It's off my face, in a loose tail, the way I've always done it. I'm still here, a little bruised, a little dented, but remarkably, the girl who first set foot on this island almost 60 years ago remains. I suspect only those who knew me then can see through the thickening patina, and it breaks my heart how rapidly the crowd of seers is diminishing. The call about Leonard came last night. I sat quietly for a while, listened to the owls. I took out my old notebooks, the threepenny jotters that came with me to the island in 1960, found him in my hopeful curly scrawls. My neck got cricked. The cocks crowed all through the night. I slept badly and woke to a morning crowded by dreams. The summer visitors are long gone. There's unrest in Athens as austerity bites, refugees, lost children, fires in the streets. Boats are going out, pulling people from the water. There's plenty for us to chew over, so you might think we'd let the American election slide by. But at the port this morning, as I idled with my one good bitter espresso of the day, watching the mules being led away from the boats with their cargoes, 
the news of the new president found me. It slithered from the water with the morning pages and spread rapidly like a stench along the agora. There were horrified groans even from the donkeys, disbelieving splutters from every table, passerby and boat. For a moment, it was a comfort to think that at least Leonard has been spared this. <laughs> um, so we'll be doing a Q&A in a few minutes. So if anyone watching has any questions, get them in now and make sure to let us know where you're watching from. One of the things that happened on Idra in 1960 was that a relatively unknown Canadian poet called Leonard Cohen gave his very first musical performance. So here's one of the songs that he wrote, inspired by his time on the island. Like a bird on the wire Like a drunk in a midnight choir I have tried in my way to be free Thank you, Alinka, for the accompaniment. Um, so we've had a few questions that have come in before, and then we're going to have some, some of the questions that have been coming in on Facebook Live as well. So the first question comes from Kelsey J. Edwards, and she asks, When you first came to Idra, had you intended writing a book that would feature the island and some of its more colourful characters? And once you got started, did you draw inspiration from the personalities living on the island today for your characters? Um, 
The first time I went to Idra, I had no intention of writing a book about anyone there. I just thought we'd go and have a nice holiday, all of, in fact, all of us. And um, then while I was there, I came across a memoir by Charmian Clift, which was written, published in 1959, and was about her first year on the island. And I became absolutely fascinated by her. And what I hadn't realised when we'd gone for that week um, was that it was the island that Leonard Cohen had a house on, even though I was a massive Leonard Cohen house. Somehow that had passed me by. And in fact, Idra is so... It's such a sort of great place because they don't make a huge thing about Leonard Cohen being there. If you go to Idra, you wouldn't particularly know that that's where he'd had his house. And the next thing I discovered was this connection between Charmian Clift and George Johnston and Leonard Cohen. And so it kind of became like a labyrinth, and I became so fascinated by them. Very shortly afterwards, I knew that I did want to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a question from Horace on Twitter. Hello, Horace. Horace asks, and it's obviously been a huge thing, this book. it's taken years. Yeah. Um, did it energise you or exhaust <laughs> you? Oh, gosh, both, probably. Um, it, I think... Um, I think there were, de there were times when the research, because that so many of the people who were there were writers, and writers write, and they write about each other, and they write about themselves, and a lot of them have academic libraries where all their papers and their diaries are stored, and then there are biographies of them. And so the more I researched the people who were actually there in 1960, and because I'm quite a completist, I did want to know about every person who was in that bohemian community, the more research I did, the more research there was to do. But actually, David joined me in the research because we do seem to have this habit of doing everything together. So, I don't know, were you exhausted or energised by it? I've never asked you. <laughs> I was exhausted at times, but uh, it was just such fun, though. I mean, yeah. you know what I am, a bit obsessive about things. I yeah. do like to yeah. delve deeply into the internet and to Alistair. Yeah, It has given us a, a sort of very deep connection with the plates, I think, because there were times when going there in the present, it was very odd that it wasn't 1960. It hasn't changed that, that much, hasn't it has changed. to be said. No. I mean, it's a, still a beautiful, beautiful place, and everything is virtually the same. Yeah, they have more electricity, and they have water that comes out of their taps. I don't mind that. <laughs> so it's not food. Georgios on Facebook wants to know about this place, Katsikas. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this place... And, of course, about your book, Heroes, meeting there. Thank you very much, oh. says Georgios. Thank you, Georgios. Um, well, Katsikas, which is still um, still there, same family own it. It's now called Rolio. Rolio? Rolly. 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 And we still have breakfast there when we go there, as the foreign community did in 1960. And before that, it's, it's a sort of waterfront cafe. In 1960, it was also the main grocery store. And there was a, was a sort of charcoal um, barbecue in the back in the winter where they would all gather. And I mean, it sounds so romantic. They would just all gather around these sort of charcoal braziers. And Sophia Katsikas would, would cook whatever had been brought in by the boats, octopus, which actually I don't approve of, but um, <laughs> fish. And, and, um, and they would just gather and drink the local wine and have a really, really good time. I, mm -hmm. I really like the sounds of the winter, winters mm. in those days. On Twitter, Football for Life Liverpool, hello Football for Life <laughs> Liverpool, I wonder who he supports. <laughs> says, do you ever find yourself drifting into writing a song when writing a book? Ah, well, the thing that David was playing at the beginning um, is actually a song which was going to be um, premiered, really, um, this week, um, which is called um, Yes, I Have Ghosts. And that song was written as a, out of a line that is in the book that then became a lyric and a song. Um, so, yes, I suppose the answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, so we've got prepared to, in these circumstances yeah. to be able to Let's take yeah. a couple give of, it, do it justice, so of live wait. questions now. Paul Cheeseman, hello Paul Cheeseman, says, um, do you all live together at present? Which I suppose is a question about coronavirus, really. Yeah, well, we How don't, normally, we live, we don't normally live together. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge luxury that we are all together. 
Um, and my heart goes out to anyone who doesn't want to be alone and is alone in, in this, these circumstances. Um, this one's keeping us all very cheerful. So, um, yeah, I mean, here we all are. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to another so, question. Hello, Joe Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> and Ishtar, happy yeah. birthday. Uh, this is a question um, for you and David from Wayne Rambo. Hello, Wayne Rambo. Hi, says Wayne. Polly and David. You have both worked together on books and albums over the years, but do you ever argue about things? If you do, if you do, how do you decide who's best? Oh, we spin the knife. You don't go through life without arguments. Of course we, there are We arguments. don't argue. What are you talking about? Um, see? <laughs> QED. <laughs> But um, artistically, I don't think we really argue that much. I mean, Polly's writing her book. I may throw my oar in on occasion, but um, obviously I defer to her, and she would usually, on a musical basis, defer to me. Not on a lyrical one, of course, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not so difficult. We make it all work. It's, um, it's a fantastic privilege to be able to work with someone who writes as well as Polly does. Um, Polly, a.k.a. my mum, this is a question for you. Uh, Michelle Adamovitz asks, what song or poem of Leonard Cohen's do you love the most? Oh, God, it would be impossible to come up with one. Um, oh, there's so many. I mean, tonight I was listening to This Smoky Life, and I just thought, oh, this is my favourite. It really sort of gets me in the heart. But, you know, Go No More Roving, which is actually from a Byron poem. I really love it. Um, came so far for beauty. I actually really like a lot of the work on the very unpopular Phil Spector album um, because it just feels so sort of honest and true often. Um, and poems, I love Days of Kindness. I love... Um, Oh, so many, just so many. Um, I like the late albums, I like the early albums, I like the middle albums, I like all the poetry. I have um, different favourites all the time. Yeah, it changes all the time. David, do you have a favourite? Same as you. I mean, I, I, change. I love going home yeah. at the moment is one of my favourites. I mean, years ago, Hallelujah was one of my favourites, but I couldn't, no, I couldn't can't be really bothered to listen to it now, it's been so overdone. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got a few more questions coming in uh, live. Um... Let's see. Do, 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 do. A question from Louise Allen Jones. Charlie, are you only reading questions from people with very interesting names? <laughs> no comment. Um, Giuseppe, Giuseppe Sester Wood says, oh no, Giuseppe, Giuseppe Sester says, Would on an Island be the ideal soundtrack for this book? Is there any common trait between the book and the album? Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, there, I don't there's, answer. there is, there's an island. Oh, there, there's, there's an, an island. island with islands. Good. Thank yeah. you for that question. <laughs> um, Kai Hall says, Hi Kai, what was the most amazing thing you found out about the characters when you researched, open brackets, really deeply closed brackets, from Kai, who elaborates that he's half German and half American? Oh, um, oh. The, mo the most amazing thing. Oh, God, crikey. Um... I guess amazing doesn't have to be good. It could be <laughs> shocking. Oh, I can't think of one thing. There were so many things. There was a huge amount of serendipity. Um, so one of the most amazing things was, you know, I was trying to track down the real people, and thank you if any of them are listening. I interviewed a lot of the children of the people who were there in 1960, um, who were just all wonderful with finding bits of diary and photographs and information. Um, but I couldn't find this one character who is quite sort of central to it called Didi Cameron. And one day I was at my friend's house and I was saying, oh, I just can't find out who this woman is. And yet she's sort of mentioned in all the literature as this woman who was there. And I know that she's in the photographs. And this friend said, oh, I know her. Um, sorry, she, she is dead now, but she was my therapist. Here's her daughter's number. And that was an amazing moment. But that I don't happened know. every week. That happened every week. There were such strange sort of connections to people. We've got another question that came in before. This is from Jesus in Chile. Jesus asks, 
Hi, Polly. What are the chances that the book will come out in Spanish? And people have also asked about German, French, Dutch. Yeah, a lot of it, people asking about Italy as well. I mean, the book, I hope, will come out in lots of languages at the moment. You know, like everything, the publishing industry is on lockdown, closed down, whatever you call it. And um, I suppose that when we come out of this terrible moment, um, those things will start being negotiated again and I'll have more news. It's coming out in Greek, actually, um, at some point this year. Let's see if we've got any more live questions. Just boop a doop doo William Quadro sends a hug to everyone. Thank right. you hugs for that. Back. Yeah, hugs back to you. Um, boop, boop, boop. Let's see. Um, Kevin Hollingsworth asks, would you ever consider including David in one of your books as a character? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. He's in all my books. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Any more live questions? Come on, keep the, keep the questions coming in, please. Ah, um, Mohammed Magdi, UAE, says, Hi, Polly. Would you describe the book in three words? <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, um, how can I? You describe the book in three words. I can't describe my own work. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of people are asking who this baby is. Um, <laughs> no this, idea. She yeah, just wandered know, she in. She just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Never met her before. People are asking who we are, actually. Okay, so, no, so let's introduce <laughs> everybody. So. This lovely baby <laughs> is, this is Olga and Yanina, who is her mother, who is her mother and, and was half of the daughter-in-law and is our daughter-in-law and with Gabriel, our younger son, made this amazing set and this is Charlie. Hi. <laughs> and Polly and David and Romani, our daughter. So this is the grandchild. And this is the this grandchild. Is the grandchild. And that is, um, I don't know if you can see him snoozing. He's not in is he not? Oh, Barbunia. Come here. Oi, come here. This, come here. Good this, dog this dog is comes. Barbunia, who has lived with us for a year and is a little bit shy because he was very, very badly treated <laughs> before we got him. So I wasn't um, laughing at you, Barbunia. I was laughing at one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see if we've got any new questions coming. Ah, um, yes, so Tegan Stewart asks. Is the wonderful backdrop behind inspired by a particular building on the island? I believe I covered this in my introduction. <laughs> oh, no. and, Tegan, right. and you so were not covered. listening. <laughs> it's based on <laughs> Katsikas. The dog just burped. <laughs> it's based on Katsikas, um, which was the great meeting place of the foreign colony. And they used to sit here and wait for the boat to come in. There was a one boat a day which would bring exciting new people if there were exciting new people to arrive. They were, being on a small island, which is five miles long, they were pretty much marooned a lot of the time. Um, and it would also bring in news from the outside world. Uh, so we've got a question from Fernando Tiaxiera. He says, hi. What would you say to Mr. Cohen now, if he would be listening? Um, <laughs> I would say, yes. <laughs> uh, James Silgram says, how did people earn money at Hydra in the 60s? Were the artists and musicians able to sell their work? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, they were very poor, but it was very, very cheap to live there. I mean, you could get a, a sort of pretty nice tumble-down grand house for what it might cost to get a bed sit in somewhere like London. Um, and, um, you know, there was sunshine, food wasn't expensive, and they were living hand-to-mouth, really. They were, you know, they, they were desperate to, to, to get money for their books. Um, so, yes, they were trying to... The Rexina was cheaper than water. And the, yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, and a lot of them actually, you know, later on, they, they were people who had some sort of remittance check from home who had been sent there because their families were fed up with them. But that was later. In 1960, there were people just working really hard at their art. 
Okay, we've got another question from Lai. Sagar Pokrel. Hello, Sagar. Sagar asks, is there any chance this book could turn into an album? It's got one, got one song got out one of it. Song, it? Um, <laughs> like maybe there'll be more. I mean, we're, we're, we're here, but we're not going anywhere. Yeah, we're... <laughs> um, so, what should we do? More questions? There's, I mean, the Back questions are flooding you... in. We've yeah. got... Oh, yeah, Linker says, Linker says more. Oh, Linker wants more <laughs> questions. OK. Uh, oh, Charlie Brooks said, would your son Charlie consider doing an audio version of the book <laughs> His voice is lovely. Well, I'll consider it. You know. it's, narr it's narrated <laughs> by a woman, oh, however. As do you, Polly. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there is an, going to be, the, unfortunately, the actual proper actress, Rachel Sterling, um, who was going to be narrating the book, has her nanny has fallen foul of this virus. Best wishes to her. Um, but we have now been left with narrating it ourselves and David is being a really patient um, director, producer, recording engineer and I am trying out all the accents <laughs> um, and that's what we're doing at the moment. It's a lot of fun and a lot of hours and, uh, yes. and I'm not always that patient but I try. Um, Peter Mitchell doesn't have a, more of a statement than a question. Uh, Peter Mitchell says, Romany, I just wanted to tell you your harmony was lovely. Oh, So that's nice. Thanks. I was told an hour ago I was singing. Um, <laughs> so Fabiana Privetera. Yay! Well done. Uh, good evening, says David Chesem. Did Mr Cohen's family assist you while you wrote the book? Um, um, we had a little bit of assistance from his lawyer when we wanted to get some permissions. That, yeah. um, I did run into um, Adam, um, actually, when I finished the book, on Idra, and I thought I'd slipped in time. I was alone, and um, he was having a cup of coffee, and I looked across, and I thought, oh, my God, I've actually fallen into my book, because he looked so like Leonard. And it took me more than a second to work out that I hadn't slipped in time, that actually it was the present, and it was Adam. And then we did sort of chat, but I just felt too shy to let him know what I'd just written, so... I don't know. Yes, maybe I should send him a copy. Carry on with the questions. Some more music. Some more oh, music. play another song. Play. Should we have? Okay, but if we have another song, that means there's no more questions, oh. and that's the end of the show. Oh, we'll come so... back next week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm quite enjoying this. It, it's um, okay, another okay, song. Let's another do, question. Okay, let's have one more question. Whoever gets the next question in on the Facebook Live gets to ask the question. Hey, Charlie, do you feel of being part of a Pink Floyd album? Sorry, no. <laughs> you, next question. Uh, la, 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 la. Oops, sorry. Uh, David, you are the most favourite guitarist of all time. That's not a question. <laughs> question for, to question. Ah, yeah. Questions for Romany. Will you make a duet with your father? No. No. Oh, go on. Oh. You, oh. You're not going anywhere else. You might as well. She's playing, she's learning the harp and doing beautifully, so she might play a little bit of harp on uh, Oh, we've got a question. What kind of dog is that? Oh, it's a really special, wonderful dog. It's a bitzer. It's a yeah. special, wonderful dog. <laughs> bitzer, yes, bitzer. So ends the questions round. And now, uh, a final song. Okay. okay, another song? Yeah. Another favourite? Yeah. Another one from Idra? Come on.
Thank you. That was great fun. I enjoyed that. I loved yeah. it. That was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I, we hope you enjoyed that and brought some yeah. uh, cheer in these strange and uncertain dance. times. Same time, same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, next week, same place, same time. Yeah, let's do this again. <laughs> sure, we, we actually have... Uh, uh, where did that thing go from? Uh, somebody is asking us to come back same time oh, next week. Okay, wow. So... Uh, when they've read, had a chance to read the book, then they can ask you more okay. questions um, based on the book. Someone says, please, will you consider doing a cooking show based on the food that people eat <laughs> in the book? That is a good idea. That is a good idea. Yeah, but they just eat whiskey and figs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dormadas. Yeah. Dormadas, yeah. Well, perhaps next week we'll do a cooking show. <laughs> Literary cooking show. Yeah. Octopus. Yeah. No, oh, we're yeah. Not, octopus. we are not cooking yeah. octopus. The meal Marianne makes. What's... Axel. Axel's favourite. Axel's favourite. Okay, so long. All right, lovely. Thank you for, thank thank you for, you coming. for coming. See you next week. <laughs> Good boy, bro.